Hello there, it's Paul here and welcome everyone. Last video I did the off-center pendant and after doing that I thought, right, well perhaps I'll do another video, if not two videos, on off-center turning. Now off-center turning is something I don't do a great deal of and I've only really used it probably in two or three of my projects in the past. One being the pendant from the last video and the one other one that I can really remember that I did was a long, long time ago, probably near enough two years ago, where I produced the flowers for my wife for our anniversary. The reason I used the off-center turning on those flowers was on the stems. I didn't want straight stems, they just didn't look natural as one straight stem so I then used a little bit of off-center turning to create those curves so they looked a little bit more natural. Now of course there's lots of examples of off-center turning if you just search on Google change it to the images and look for off-center wood turning you will come up with lots of examples and the classical examples there are these really extreme like stepped pieces uh, you'll see several goblets on there that people have made with very extreme curved stems and they look absolutely fantastic those are really putting the off-center turning to the extreme now there's two ways that you can do your off-center turning one like i shoot in the last video is where you make your work in the chuck on that project video, I basically had the work in the chuck and tilled it at an angle. The advantage of this is if you've already got a base for it to hold into the chuck and you've got movement for where you can tip the work, it's really, really quick. Now, the other thing you can do in the chuck as well, which is a little bit more extreme and not necessarily to everybody's taste. And again, I think I had a video on this when I made some pendants for a necklace and I created a like a, a jam chuck here to put the pendant in after I created the disc. You can see, hopefully see on here, where the teeth marks of the jaws have held. And what I did is I actually took out two of the jaws on the side here and mounted the work in that way. And to create the off-center elements, moved it along the jaws. Now you can also buy a specific chuck and I believe Axe Minister Tools do one, and it's called something like an eccentric spiralling chuck. And I believe it's priced around about £50 from what I've seen, is that you'll mount your work onto the chuck and you'll hold it in the back with screws. So it's a bit like using a faceplate. And what it is, you've got one plate which you can undo one securing bolt rotate it around and retighten it again so it basically puts it off center now the other option which is what i'm going to do in this video to show some of the extremes is to mount your work between centers now the good thing is if you mount your work between centers and i've just got my live center here just to, to show an example but obviously this way i can offset it at wherever i like straight on that point which i can't do so much on the chuck now the good thing is now between doing it between centers is that I can do it not only on this end, but where the basically the driving center is on the opposite end, you can also off center. So where it has the advantages over the chuck, with the chuck it was only tipping out, if this was the chuck, tipping that way. So you would get your nice extreme off center this end a lot more than you would this end. Now again, you can replicate that between centers because you don't have to alter this end but you just alter this end. But if you want to get the same effect all the way across, you can alter both ends and have them totally off center. Now, one of the first things that most people would be concerned about when they do off center turning is that you're turning all that air, especially when you've got a big chunk of wood coming at you from one side and then disappearing and going back again. Now, the way to think about this is that it's no different than when you true up a square blank. I mean, if you imagine that I want to true up this end, it doesn't matter what tool you use, whether I use a roughing gouge, spindle gouge, um, or a skew, every tool is gonna to hit one point there, it's gotta rotate a quarter of a turn, and I've got one little point that's gonna hit there, and it goes all the way around for all four sides. So when I initially start, I'm only literally just touching four corners. Now when you're doing off center turning, yes, you're only gonna hit one little section for the whole rotation but depending on the size of your spindle if it's fairly small like this you haven't got to go in very far before you start establishing your cut 
and the big the area becomes a lot bigger so just treat it the same way as if you was going to true up a square blank like this now i'm just going to true this up and i'm just going to use the skew because it's just nice and quick so as i say i've got square edges here even with the skew just gently to ride the bevel and true it up and that's exactly the same way as i would do the off center turning I would say that if you can mark out where you want to do all your off-center pieces and pierce them, say like with the point with your live center, I may well only off-center this in two locations, but what I'm gonna do is in actual fact mark four corners out. So just so you can see where I'm gonna mark, I'm just going to use the Sharpie to go one there, one there, one there, and one there. And they might not seem very far out, um, I'm only actually half the width from the center. Having that as the center point, this really is the bit area that's trued up. This is the additional wood that you're working on that has been thrown at you. Now, just so I get this roughly the same both ends, I'm going to put a mark on there and a mark on there. So it's not exact science. And again, I will put a mark there, 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 and there. Even if you use your live center, just pierce all those spots because it becomes a lot easier when you want to locate your work on the lathe. The downfall with using between centers like this is a bit like when I did the last project when if you're going to go down to something very very narrow which doesn't have much strength in the wood especially when you're off center if i've got that narrow section of this side the pressure of the live center especially onto a step center because there's a fair bit of spring in there which i can reduce is actually going to put a lot of pressure on the wood one side where if you've got a small joint this side it's going to be fairly weak and it's likely to clap just so you get an example of what i've got here i'm going to number these up as well so i'm going to put one there two three and four and i'm going to also number the ones on the opposite side as well so it will be one which will be whereas one is on the top here i will put one on the bottom here two is on this side so i'll put two this side three is on the opposite side and four there so therefore number one relates to number one on the same side of the wood so whereas i had everything both on the center last time i'm going to now put this to the extremes of one and one all of a sudden you can see i've got a lot of wood really off center the only central point in there is this really, if, as you can see from the step center here, is that narrow bit down there. The over half of this wood now is really all off balance and off center. This is now the advantage, what I couldn't do in the chuck. I am equally off center at both ends, which means it doesn't matter where I cut down the wood, I'm always going to get the same result. Whereas when I did it in the chuck, because I could only tilt from the chuck here, this end would still be fairly true, whereas this end would be at the extremes of the off center here. Now, if you bought that eccentric truck from Axe Minister, it would be the same all through like this. So I'm now just gonna use the spindle gouge on this, and I'm gonna treat this exactly the same way as if I was truing up a square piece of wood. But as you can see, this is the only place on the wood to start with where I'm actually going to get a cut so it's going to do a full rotation as you can see I've got a lot of air there before it comes around again so the idea is to take gentle cuts to start with until you really develop your cut and then you can start going in deeper and deeper so just gently on the tool I'm on the tool rest gently trying to come in until I I'm now actually touching the wood. And 
and as I go deeper and deeper, the less air I'm actually turning. Now the way, another good tip on this as well, which does take a little bit of getting used to, which not everybody, which I do an awful lot, I will often, when I'm doing my cut here, I will be looking at this side for the ghosted image for where I'm actually cutting. Now, if you watch carefully on the video, it may well hopefully show up as well as that you can see on this side, the ghosting of precisely where the cut is. And that is actually a lot easier than when I'm doing the cut this side. So my eyes will constantly be going backwards and forwards to both sides. One this side, watching what I'm doing with the tool, and I mean, once I've established it and I'm starting to do the cut, I will often not be watching this side to see where I'm actually cutting and how deep. So I'll just carry on with this now. So I'm watching the front where the tool is. I've got my cut and now I'm watching the opposite side. that's soon developing now you can use any tool on here as long as like you would do normally with your wood turning as long as it's safe to be using that tool with the wood orientation so I'll we'll just use this now to take this down a lot deeper See, my cut now is on there, literally half the wood. And again, just using another, another spindle gauge, it's just got a lot bigger angle. Hopefully you can see now, I've now got one really extreme cut in there. The other thing to remember as well is that as you go along, if you're going to keep altering the axis like this, if I'm not going to revisit this area, sand it up now while it's spinning on the lathe. You've got it on the perfect orientation. So what I'm going to do next is I'm now going to put this directly back in the true centers. I will now take out another area in the middle here so that we've got like a disc. So just for speed again, I'm going to take this out initially with a parting tool. So hopefully you can now see the extremes already got there. And again, you would sand this piece up before you did anything else. I'm now going to go to the opposite side to three. And I'll do that for both ends. Again, I'm watching the ghosted images of where everything is here. And I'm going to just go down here. I'm cutting a lot of air, so I'm just going slowly. Hopefully you can see really with the real exaggeration of the off center turning, what really wonderful pieces you can get out of there. I mean, that's just an old chair leg. Uh, I've not done any sanding on it. I've done a very, very quick rough cut, but just taking my time over a bit better and certainly sanding it all down would come up with something that's really, really nice. I've seen one or two people do this on things like goblets. Uh, I think Mike Walt 
did one like this. This is really where the power of turning between centers is a lot better. I mean, certainly like I say the, the chunk that you can buy from Axe Minister Tools to fully move the piece of work round off center would work just as well. But on an ordinary chunk where I was, unless I was taking out a couple of the jaws to be able to move the base around on the chunk, I wouldn't be able to get that effect. I mean, I did mark out four points for the off center turning. I've only used two there, so I could have actually gone round each one as I went all the way round, and you'd have created a really nice pattern all the way round. But I wanted to just give an example of what it was like on the two extremes and then still turning where it's truly centered up on the middle piece. Treat it just the way as if you was rough turning a piece of wood with the squares. It's no, no. It's certainly no different. Yes, you've got a little bit more air when you first take your first cut because you're only touching one piece of the wood, whereas when you've got a square piece of stock, you're catching four corners. But the same principles are there the way you do the turning. Now, certainly with the off-center turning like that, because of the air, the faster you can get your lathe up to, the less of that turning of the air that you feel. But certainly only turn it up to what you feel safe. Now, next project, I will use the other part of the chair leg and I will show you then still between centers on the off center turning but where I use the less extremes to create something that looks a little bit more natural probably on a project of something that most people have either thought about doing or certainly have made one in the past thanks a lot for watching